Welcome to the new flat rate podcast. We started out as a contracting family, and now we give other service providers practical tools for their toolkits. If you have any questions or want to learn more, visit us at menupricing.com. Hi, I'm Danielle Putnam. Today, I've invited a very good friend of mine, Colleen Keyworth, to join me on a discussion about cybersecurity, Facebook ads, TikTok, Instagram, what to and not to do with your marketing, how to start marketing online ad campaigns. We've got some some great tips and educational content for you. And Colleen brings a wealth of knowledge. She's been in the industry for a very long time, comes from a family of contractors. She's with online access. So stay tuned and listen in and let's learn together. I look forward to it. Colleen, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I really appreciate you taking the time to jump on here. I'm excited to have you. Colleen has been a good friend of mine for many years. We actually served on the board together with women in HVACR. I have since rolled off the board. And now Colleen is the current vice president for women in HVACR and incoming president at the end of this year. So congratulations, Colleen. Thank you. It's been a fun experience. Yeah, it's a big honor and it's a lot of work. I know it is, but thank you for what you're doing. Uh, so we we did meet through Women in HVAC, but also our families are contracting businesses. So we share a lot in common about that. And uh, all of the work that Colleen does with online access and here at the New Flat Rate, we've always been very friendly companies working together. We serve a lot of the same mutual customers, so we love to cross refer each other. So we've got a lot of background story. And one time Colleen did come to Georgia and we rode electric bikes together around the neighborhood. Yeah, that was fun. I wiped out but survived and then also went four wheeling with Rodney, which was its own experience. But <laughs> our company itself uses new flat rate. We are huge, huge fans. And um, it's one of the biggest tools that we, we swear by to any of our customers for sure. Well, hey, I appreciate that. And I'm glad, yeah, they have online access and they also have Vincent's uh, Heating and Air and Plumbing in Michigan, Port Huron, Michigan. So. Colleen, I'm so glad you're here. And to have a conversation for our audience, today we're talking about Facebook ads. We're talking about online advertising and cybersecurity, actually. And I, I think I'd just like to open up the floor to you to tell us a little bit about what happened this week and why we're even having this discussion. Well, online advertising is a big deal to any clients, really, whether it be Google Pay Per Click or online advertising with Facebook or Instagram. And many, many, many of our customers deal with this on a daily basis. And this week, uh, Online Access actually has a service. We have a team that puts together advertising for our customers and we manage their campaigns. And so we actually had a customer this week um, get compromised and it, it was a whole big thing. And we have steps in place, but there are things that these hackers are getting even smarter. Um, so what it boils down to is now a customer on Sunday night uh, got, a, got an email and the email saying, hey, your contact information has been updated. Was this you? And they didn't think anything of it. This customer is a little, a little older and just was like, I don't really want to deal with Facebook. It's not my thing. I, I should probably, I'm just going to let my receptionist handle it on Monday. Well, Sunday night already came and went. They he got two more emails, kind of ignored them, gave them to his customer support uh, in, or his, uh, his receptionist in the morning to look at. She didn't really look at it until much later and was like, oh, okay, this might be something else. Then she handed it off to our team. By this time, it is Tuesday. We find out that since then, that per the emails were coming from a hacker who had gotten in from a compromised password on their end. So the, the owner's password was compromised. And then what happened after that was insane. They changed the contact information. So any recovery efforts, any changes, any billing, anything goes right to their, the hacker's email. And so the Facebook's policy is if you don't respond to those emails they send you within a half hour, it's game over. At an event famous for giving out awards in bizarre categories, the MC enthusiastically announces, the next prize will go to the laziest person in the audience. If you think you qualify, raise your hand. Everyone raises their hands except a middle-aged man who seems to show little interest. Congratulations, you are the winner, says the MC to the man. Your prize is this $100 bill. Still showing no emotion, 
The man replies, would you mind coming over here and putting it in my pocket? If you like stories like this, stay tuned to the end of the episode for Storytime with Tina Farr, where we tell real stories about contractors in the field. We typically don't talk about people who are lazy, but it's still a great time. And so it is the most bizarre race against the clock that was a hard lesson to learn because, of course, if those don't get responded to, the changes take effect. And so the ad spend had been over $5,000. It was $900 an hour on their credit cards. And they brought in ads. It was a contractor's account. So of course, this is a normal contractor business page. This is just like your Facebook page, guys. This is, this is your normal business page. And so the ad account or your credit card, if you have a credit card attached to it, the hackers use that card to change the page, run ads for t-shirts. And it was the most bizarre thing. The, the profile was changed, their picture was changed. All the followers were the same, but all the ads they were spending were targeted worldwide and they were thousands of dollars an hour. So it became one of those racing at the clocks. So we immediately removed credit cards. We immediately tried to block out stuff, but we had to figure out how to remove the user. And in extension of that, we removed um, our company as a user, of course, because we have other, you know, other accounts attached. Not that we have like four-step author authorizations or authentications in place, but, you know, just to make sure that we were separating any other access. Because, I mean, it's just crazy how this goes so fast. And so that's one of the things we, uh, that we're just kind of working on is educating people. It's like, we can't be there for individual users notifications. It would be like your account getting your personal account, Daniel, getting hacked and then coming into the new flat rate. Okay. Wow. So this is actually really scary to make sure that I understand. uh, Let's say that it was an HVAC contractor. Okay. That you're telling the story about. I'm just going to use that as an example. So here we have an HVAC contractor receives an email that says, Hey, somebody changed your password and your login. Was that you? We all see those emails. We all get them. And we, of course, ignore them. So you're kind of saying Facebook's giving you 30 minutes. So if you see those, one, let's respond. Yes, it was me. No, it was not me, right? Well, since this person did not respond, which happens to all of us, I do it all the time. I just close them out, send them to junk. And half the time, Colleen, I think that they're spam. I'm like, oh, that's just spam. So I don't even pay attention. I just send it to, to trash, right? Sometimes so they then, are. That's the crazy thing. Sometimes I thought they are, so. and they target Sunday. They target Sunday specifically because it's a day that not many people are on their email. And it could be as simple as changing your address or your information has been updated. It's not even just your password. Okay. So then because a response wasn't happening fast enough, this cyber hacker gets into the account and starts changing the ad spend onto what they want. Because I want to know what's in it for the hacker. So if the hacker is doing t-shirts globally, is it their t-shirts? I mean, how's the hacker getting any money? Is that a good question? It's our credit. So it's the user credit card. So right. I'm a business manager set up. And so there's many layers to this. I'm going to keep it as, as simple as possible. So on a business account, you have the ability to, to buy ads or boost mm-hmm. posts as it would most mm-hmm. of the yes. credit card. But on the upper levels, if you're doing mass campaigning in Facebook, you have your business manager account. Yeah. And business manager has several campaigns running at certain time, and then you have your credit cards attached to it, and you have different credit cards and different spend limits. They go in there, delete all your accounts, which is, by the way, all the work. That means that those are audiences that you've spent time curating and building. That's um, ad spend. That's all the the targeting that you've done. That's the time to set up all those campaigns. Right. Facebook, there's a lot of of information there. And then what happens after that is they use your credit card because Facebook won't allow you to delete both credit cards. If you have multiple credit cards in there, you can start deleting them as we start doing. But if there's an outstanding balance, you have to keep that credit card. So of course you have to cancel that credit card attached to that account immediately. Um, And it just racks up and racks up and racks up. But the biggest thing is multiple people are usually on one business account and you have to find out first and foremost what person's been compromised. Mm Mm-hmm. Wow, that's scary. And usually I don't look at this stuff. It's so easy to say, oh, that would never happen to me. But here it happened right here in our back door with one of our fellow contractors. And then thousands gets racked up on the credit cards um, for that. That's really interesting. Can we talk a little bit about Facebook ads in general? Because what I know is 
if you don't have any experience, if you're not currently running Facebook ads, it, it might be a little scary to think about setting it up. And sometimes it is a little bit hard to get it going and dial it in so that you're actually producing results that work for your business and you're not just spending money on ads that aren't working. So I, I definitely agree that sometimes it's, it's way better to work with a professional, somebody like Online Access, who can do that for you and set it up and to manage it. But if you've never done it, is there any kind of one, two, three step tip that you'd tell us? Absolutely. Um, Facebook advertising is layered. Uh, you really have like the beginners or, or what you guys are comfortable with. And that yeah, that kind of gets into boosting, whether you're just kind of looking at, at kind of a post that you already have and just putting a little extra cash on it. I would say anybody for a beginner, boosting is a great way to start because the best way to look at it is like adding gasoline to a fire. Um, any post that you have that is already performing organically really, really well, if you spend, even if you budget for your company, somewhere like 100, maybe 200 a month, I would even say $50 a month, but I'd say 100 is a, a solid budget. And you use that to sprinkle or, or boost the post locally, especially ones that already have already had growth, ones that mm -hmm. already have engagement. That's the best way to use that kind of a, a beginner level budget to get into boosting and stuff. And what that does is it just increases the reach. And if you already have organic engagement without paying money, the ad performs 10 times better. And okay. so once you add money, Facebook starts attaching it to all the people who've already engaged with it. And then it goes from there. Um, audiences is a part of that. Now, Facebook has instant tools that they have that where you can say um, target, you know, post to friends of friends or people who like your page and their friends. Or you can even dial down to like local level. So you can choose cities in your areas area you can say 50 mile radius you can say 20 mile radius you can even say um ages between 20 and 60 or you could say um you know what, what whether they're female or male so there is like specific stuff you can dial in the next level of that is going to be campaign advertising now there's two ways to do this you can do boosting um as just your basic like you know what you're already posting but if you're planning a i don't know a maintenance special or maybe a hiring ad um, there's two different ways to approach that. There is being able to use Facebook hiring tools and they'll actually have a uh, structure set up where you can add money to that hiring post and it'll target locally. And that actually walks you through that process. It's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, but it's more targeted to job seekers. Um, okay. Maintenance post, so, uh, I can, yeah, a maintenance post uh, or a sale like that you're running, that gets into where you're planning campaigns and building audiences. And that's where sometimes having a professional, it helps because they're able to go in there, curate. So you're not spending money on something outside your reach. Mm -hmm. um, one of the number one things I think people get back is, yes, you can spend easily $1,000 a week on Facebook and get massive amounts because the cost per click is so low. Yeah. But again, it's usually low quality leads that you're getting, ones that can't pass credit checks or they're out of your area. So making okay. sure you actually have a decent audience is one of the biggest keys. Yeah. Why Facebook? Is Facebook, are you finding, is it still a really great platform for contractors to gain and gather leads or is there a better platform right now that you're seeing people are moving to? Um, Facebook, I think the, the, as far as social goes, as far as social platforms for ads, is probably still the number one. Um, Facebook also has Instagram integrated with it. So any advertising you pay for or any boosting you do can go to your Instagram as well. So you, now you're covering two platforms. Um, in general, even for contracting, even though what we sell isn't necessarily, um, you know, the most uh, exciting stuff in the world, is there is a market for it still as far as there's, there's your community pages, there's, there's referral words of, word of mouth, there's, of course, being familiar and seeing brand because, of course, we are creatures of making decisions on things through irrational filters. We're mm -hmm. not always looking at the consumer reports. We're looking for, do I recognize them? And does my neighbor use them? Or do I like the color of their logo? And these are all totally. things that happen on Facebook all the time. So even if you're seeing ads, I'm sure all of you have probably experienced this where you're scrolling through your feed and you notice different ads for things and stuff, but you still notice it. Um, it's not as, as great as, of course, some of those boutiques that show up with those cute clothing that you're like, oh, that's really nice. I want to click on that right away. But again, it's still registering in your mind. It's still being in front of an audience. And a lot of Facebook advertising, I would say, is even useful just to build your audience. Mm -hmm. so for instance, 
if you're just doing it to get a sale or an ROI, it, it can happen. I've seen people do it successfully, but again, it's the long-term game and it you is. should probably have landing pages to your site and a whole, you know, a whole structure for it. Um, but if you're using it to build an audience, it's a great tool. It's a great tool to bring awareness to your page, add likes, add followers. And then that way, when you do post stuff, you already have a built-in audience. Mm -hmm. You know, something else I love about being on Facebook is there's still an audience on there. Like people in general are still on Facebook. And I love it when somebody says, hey, you know, who has a plumber? I need, I've got an issue today or an emergency. And it's great that they can just tag. Oh, and then you'll see all these people tagging their favorite plumbing company or their favorite plumber for example, right, in particular. And so it's such an easy way to get referrals on Facebook. I do love that piece about it. Um, I saw the other day on Instagram, because I've heard a lot of businesses, especially contractors, not sure if they should do anything or have an Instagram account. Uh, you know, how would I do it? There's just pictures. Is it any good? But I saw somebody post a video that's a TikTok video, and it was a hot video right now of just somebody making a cool face and doing a cool little move, you know, with the words of the company and their sale and their special of what they were promoting right on top of that TikTok video. And I saw it on Instagram, and I thought, wow, that's kind of brilliant. It was just a creative way to utilize that platform. And then we had uh, training here at the New Plat Rate right this week. We had contractors come to the location, and one of the ones from uh, I can say his name, a friend of ours, Keith from Louisiana, was talking about how he is now using TikTok for his company and he's doing mimic videos, himself being out there and just being cool and dropping it and doing all sorts of, I don't even know TikTok videos, but he says, I'm mocking all of them and I'm, you know, building up for his page. So I, I found it interesting that people are finding ways to use social platforms with their business, engaging with audiences. No, uh, TikTok is one of those ones that we get questions on all the time. Mm -hmm. Now, it, the way Keith's doing it, that's the best way to do it. Uh, I would say TikTok right now, actually, in general, offers you honestly the best way to recruit. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, doing those funny videos or engaging or showing a day in the life or doing a, a, a fast forward video of an install or even like a ride in the truck or your guys on top of rooftop units and stuff. Those are fun, engaging videos that is TikTok appropriate and it brings a light and transparency into what we're doing in the field every day. And it's a great hiring tool. It's a great recruiting tool because that's your demographic. TikTok mm -hmm. is generally that younger audience and that is exposure into a field that nobody's talking about. And right. that's kind of one of the best recommendations that we've given so far is use it as that tool to complement your existing marketing. But TikTok's not necessarily the demographic for, you know, a, a lot of your a lot of your customers. I mean, when you do Instagram and Facebook and you share those TikTok videos on those platforms, that's money in the bank there because, of course, now you're able to cross post that content and it's getting more more uh, more visits, more engagement. Uh, Instagram also offers Reels, which is its kind of answer to TikTok. It's it's the same kind of concept where it's quick videos and stuff. Okay. And that's really where things are trending right now. Interesting. I didn't, uh, I'd never thought of TikTok as hiring. That's a great idea. So everybody write that down. Be sure that you have your pen and write that down to use it for recruiting, ride alongs, fast forward installs. It is a, a good look into your company. Even wow factors that you do for your company. Excellent jobs before and after little, little snippets and stuff. I, I could see people really appreciating and enjoying that. Um, that's great feedback. We have a customer in Texas right now who is a, um, a smaller contracting business um, doing a great job providing great service, but right now it's very competitive in his market. There's some very large players that have lots of ad money, and so they have a lot of market share in Texas very competitive for him. And so he was having a hard time. Where do I get leads? How do I build my audience? What do I do on Facebook? And so we suggested to him to just start doing a smile a day. So on Facebook, they just started doing a smile a day campaign where they'd find a customer and have them smile and post the pictures or a technician smiling, doing something, posting pictures. And their audience grew astronomically really fast because of this whole smile a day campaign. And it was simple. It wasn't this humongous idea that took a lot of work and effort out of the box. It didn't cost them a thing, but people like to see people smiling. And they like to engage with that. It's personal. So it's, it's personal. It's simple. And it didn't have to be a whole, let's create a video script and get a film crew or, 
you know, it, it doesn't have to be that to start building your audience and making money by getting I, I beat, okay, so this is like a dead horse to me that I've, I've beaten a lot of times. And I know that people listening probably heard me say this a lot, but I, I really feel it this way. Your company has every ability to do this stuff. Identify what person in your company, whether it's a, a younger tech, maybe it's a CSR, maybe it's, maybe it's going to be somebody that's going to be your intern for the summer. Okay, maybe it's somebody's daughter or somebody's son who needs that summer job. Maybe it's a college student just getting out that needs something for a time being. But you have to identify who that person is because it's not going to be you, the owner, all the time. Mm. And, and you cannot put that pressure on yourself because the reality is, is there are so many things that happen in the summer and this becomes second priority. It's what you, you think about. You're like, oh, I should have done this. Or, oh, we should have done this or posted this. But if you have somebody whose main job and this could be a part-time employee, guys. This could be like, you know, like whatever it needs to be at, 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 a, at an hourly rate, part-time doing this for you, uh, going on those jobs, making those fun relapse videos or going in and doing the goofy stuff or sticking those extra details. That's the personal touch that a third-party company, even my own, cannot provide. We can't be there with you and create those moments like a smile a day or mm -hmm. the TikTok funny videos and stuff. But finding that person for your company, even though it seems like a frivolous position, is worth every penny when it comes to engaging with your community, meet, being a real person, being a real company, being a real business, and, and being family oriented and really giving that transparency. You can't get that from a third party. Mm -mm. That's a really great tip, Colleen. You've shared some really good uh, nuggets and some a wealth of knowledge, really, uh, in our simple conversation about social media, even. But the tip of taking that off of you as the owner and not putting that pressure on you. I know so many of us carry that weight all the time of the, oh, I should have, oh, I should have, oh, next time I'm going to. But we're already the bottlenecks of our businesses so often. So taking it off and assigning to somebody, it's not that they are replacing you as the face of the company, but even if they were awesome, you want your customers to be able to relate with somebody. So for example, on our team, uh, my project manager, Rosalind, many of you know Rosalind because she's a crazy cat lady. But yet she's not a crazy cat lady that, you know, is filled, you know, uh, she's not a hoarder too, I guess, you know, which we kind of see on TV sometimes, like the <laughs> cat ladies are hoarders. She's not that crazy cat lady. Yeah, she's not <laughs> that crazy, right? She just loves cats. And so much to where if you ever have a cat around, she goes crazy. So we've started utilizing that. She just started shooting videos and doing posts and letters and things about her cats. And people are relating with her and reacting with her. And I, I could have never done that. I mean, I'm not that friendly. You know what I mean? She's just so, oh my gosh, you have a cat. And all of a sudden they're best friends. So I can see so well what you're saying. I've just picked somebody on your team and let them have some of the limelight in the front because there's other people in your audience who are really going to enjoy connecting with that person on your team. And it takes- And generally they're you. comfortable with social media. They already yes. know the tools. They already know yes. how to do live videos. They're really good with TikTok. I myself, I mean, at 35 years old, I'm not the best TikTok person. And Snapchat isn't even my friend, okay? Maybe that makes me a very sad elder millennial. But again, there is so many other things that TikTok does. I, I even have younger people on my team. They're like, yeah, you don't know about TikTok. It's awesome. And then they have to tell me about it. You know? Uh -huh. it's, yeah. It's, it's not everybody's everything, but especially if you're the business owner, why try to, you know, learn that all of it, it's, it's so much, choose what you feel comfortable with, and then use other people and, and what they're comfortable with, and, and it's way easier to engage your team, too. Great point. I, I don't have a TikTok account. I've never been on Snapchat, so don't try to force yourself into Same that here. if it's not your platform. <laughs> right, right. Utilize those who are already there and already know how to do it. That's a good point. Neat. Okay. Well, let's talk for a minute, Colleen, about what online access does. I know we've just been giving content and talking about social media and ad platforms, uh, but what does online access provide? What kind of services do you do? I know uh, some, but could you share even more? Sure. Um, online access, we do uh, online marketing and social media, pay-per-click marketing, we even do logo design, graphic design, and actually equipment stickers for contractors. Uh, we well, deal mainly in electrical, plumbing, and HVAC contractors. And we have a lot of, actually, I would stand by an unbeatable customer support as far as our, our turnaround time and responsiveness. 
We have a fantastic graphics team that provides uh, 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 websites that are mobile friendly, of course, and we do web designs on the regular. Uh, we don't charge for our web designs, which is kind of unique. So all of our customers get unique custom web designs that looks like a million bucks. Um, mm -hmm. Our social media team, we're growing that actually pretty big. We actually just hired six people in the company in general. So wow. now we have 30 employees of online access from 24 wow. to 30. So it's been kind of crazy. And now we have a social media team of four and that's going pretty crazy too because we've just been seeing so much growth in that. And now we want to be able to offer a more robust offering. And so we just needed some more people. Um, everything from doing the campaign stuff to getting into Pinterest. I, I know that sounds crazy, but Pinterest is another tool that a lot of plumbers and contractors aren't using that we were trying to help utilize. Point. Um, so being able to do the basic posting, your graphic design, if you need a logo design, that's all stuff we do. Door hangers, yard signs. We don't do printing, but we do do design and we have the mm -hmm. team to facilitate that for any contractor. Um, in addition to that, the equipment stickers is something people don't know about us. And I don't talking about those like you're a marketing company. Equipment stickers are some of the best forms of guerrilla marketing. And we are in a crazy, crazy, crazy housing market right now, guys. This is insane. Okay. So the fact that you have turnover in housing so crazy, those equipment yeah. stickers, they can Important. be your best friend. Yeah. And if you were that contractor, if you don't have a system of stickers, you use sheets. They're UV rated, they're fantastic, they're customized to your logo, your coloring, and you can customize them whatever equipment you want. So then you can tag your shutoff for any of the water. You can do the electrical box, you can do the outdoor condenser, the indoor furnace unit, the water heater. It's all on one sheet. And now that new homeowner, they don't have to shop around. They mm -hmm. already kind of call you first. And I know people forget about it, think it's so 90s, but it works. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a provider for that kind of stuff, that's a, that's a big deal. Um, that's the kind of a service that not many people know we offer. But yeah, it, you know, I, I want to pause you there for a second and make this point. And I'm so glad you talked about stickers because although it sounds so simple, it's so possible that many of you guys have stickers and have had stickers in the past and they may be on your technician's trucks. But when is the last time that you actually did a inspection, a quality check, a, some sort of a wait a minute, let's look into this. Are our technicians actually putting stickers on equipment? Are you asking them to uh, give you a picture? And are you, are you making sure that they're doing that anymore? Because it's just easy to start something and have all good intentions. And years later, you've hired new technicians and maybe the new technicians don't even know that that's an option and it's available, especially right now where we're so busy and we're trying to ramp up. You know, contractors are so busy right now, which is so awesome. But if new people are being added to your team, they might not even know that you have stickers or where they are. So it's a simple thing that's a big deal in the long run with your branding. And so make sure that you have a process for that is what I would recommend. A simple process for stickers go on everything. Here's the list. Here's the sticker baggie. Here's the list of everywhere we put stickers in the house. And then they've got to come back with that baggie empty, turn it into the office after service calls or something, but some sort of a process that works for you and your company to make sure that you're actually utilizing the free marketing of sticker placement. So shameless, uh, shameless plug, I'd have to say a mutual partner of ours that we utilize for our own company is Company Cam. Company I mean, Cam? They're fantastic. And it was able to streamline that process for our team. And we use one sheet. So everything for that home is on one sheet. And that technician, okay. instead of having a roll of stickers bouncing around in their truck, they have to turn in an empty sheet with every job. And company cam has to, you have to be able to take pictures of what you stickered. Okay. So one sheet of stickers, you mean? Okay. So it's a one, one sheet. sheet it's got all, all the seven or eight or nine or 10 stickers, like everything. And even if we're just there for a water heater call, you better believe we're putting a sticker on that furnace. Yes. Okay. As you should. And the homeowner doesn't mind. It's helpful for them. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm glad that you mentioned that. And again, guys, remember that, you know, calling with online access, they also there in tandem run Vincent's heating, air and plumbing. And so she's got very much the pulse on what's going on out there in the field because their family businesses are doing both. They're doing the marketing and the contractor help. So she's talking to contractors all over the US and Canada Plus every I'm day. <laughs> Plus she's married to the tech, even better. So it's nothing but contractor talk in your world, right? That's true, I'm not escaping anytime soon. That's good. Hey, you know, uh, 
I wanted to, I know, you know, we can't talk for forever, although we could, but yeah, <laughs> but did online access start in the web design business or what was the initial founding? So, uh, actually both brothers, Dave and Dan actually had Vincent. So it was, they had equal parts of each. Dave have a mechanical, Dan has plumbing and it's like deals all the time. But in the early 2000s, things were kind of rough here in Michigan. And of course, like it was really hard to support two families off of our business. We were seeing some crazy stuff going on in the, in, in the economy. And so actually Dave saw where the market was headed and he had actually just got done doing a lot of public things in the industry with an invention he did for a refrigeration recovery unit. So he had enough contacts to really kind of go beyond just being the local contractor. Mm. Now he's seeing the industry as a whole and seeing in, into like how big it really gets into the, the supply chain, everything from, you know, the best practice groups and everything too. So then if you think about 2000 guys, we started in 2000 and it was like, no, it's the wild, wild west. We're talking about Al Gore talking about the internet. <laughs> he yeah. decided yeah. to create a content management system for contractors. We didn't start off being a web design company for anything but contracting. Okay. And so we have, we always have done specific content management, web design, web hosting for contractors in general. And so we started that and we had a, our simple, we still use page pilot, of course. And that's our, that's our foundation. Mm -hmm. And it was a template. It was easy. It was, it was built where they could create a template. They could customize based on the season. They could have all their stuff up there, their phone number. And then Google came on the scene Then we had to get it to SEO. And then of course, you know, now it's like the, the crazy, crazy town of there's so many people that can do a website now. It is insane. But as far as how long we've been in business, it's going, it's 21 years and it was just for contractors. It's always been for contractors. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So although it's competitive, online access, again, has their thumb on the heartbeat of what's going on. They can relate with you. And they can really dial in customers all over the U.S. and Canada, and it's constantly changing market. But yes, mm -hmm. definitely a very niche. <laughs> right, right, it is. So if you haven't talked to them, definitely reach out and, and give them a call. Before we wrap up our time, I, I love that we've talked about cybersecurity. We've talked about different ads, um, how to do things, ideas on the ads, marketing ideas, some background. Anything that you'd like to leave us with? Um, a shameless plug for the Women in HBACR annual conference. I, can't, awesome. I would be remiss if I didn't do that. So um, it's open to everybody. I really mean that. Uh, as Danielle well knows, being such an, a, a long time active member of past president, we include everybody. It's, it, it's such a great organization that's seen such explosive growth in the last couple of years. And we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the support of many of the men in our lives. I mean, I'm, some of our best mentors are men. So we get a lot of stigma on that. We had a couple CEOs and a couple uh, leaders come up to us and say, are we allowed to come to this women's conference? And we're like, absolutely, bring your team, come support your team. It's gonna be in uh, St. Pete, Florida, October 13th, 14th, and 15th. And it's gonna be a good time. Uh, we are expecting a little over 200 people. We've got three keynotes, five breakouts, two, uh, featured speakers. It's going to be a lot, a lot of content, mm -hmm. uh, plus a lot of fun. We also have Sunrise Yoga, which I'm sure I don't think any other conference has offered yet, but it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, but we're right on the beach at the Serrata Resort. It is a beautiful resort. If you haven't been there before, it is, it's a lot of fun. Um, it, it's, a, it's a total great atmosphere to even bring your family and make kind of a thing out of it. So that I'm glad you mentioned that. I've already registered. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going, and I'm actually bringing Rosalind from my team too. And I'd like to encourage anybody listening today. If you have a woman in your office, maybe she's running your office. Maybe she's been on your team for a while. Maybe she's out in the field. But if you are thinking, how can I show some appreciation to this team member? Because it's important to look at our teams and to say, am, am I giving them value and loyalty? And am I investing in them? Do they feel like I care that they're on my team? Especially right now when it's hard to find more people to add to our team, it's important to retain who we have. And this is a great way to show appreciation for anybody, any women on your team who doesn't even mean that they're a leader. They might be quiet behind the scenes. But it's somebody that's very loyal to your company and you want to show that you appreciate them. Send them to the Women in HVACR annual conference. They will get such support 
and build new friendships and come back with new knowledge that will help your company, but also the appreciation that will come back with it, knowing that you invested in them, it's worth it just for that. So thanks for mentioning that. And womeninhvacr.org is where you can register that woman that you have in mind. Yes, it's definitely worth the investment and the time. It's become my favorite event, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. And I, I'm excited that it's on the beach this year. Colleen, thank you so much for being with us. What is your contact information for those who would like some help with, with their ads to make sure that they have somebody else looking over their shoulder so they don't have to worry about cyber hacks? Absolutely. Um, you can reach me anytime. I have my cell phone number, and I know that's really weird, but it's the best way to get a hold of me. 810 uh, 810- 334-6711. And then my email, C keyword at online-access.com. Terrific. Be sure and reach out to Colleen and see what she can do for your business. Thank you so much for listening today. And Colleen, thank you for being here. I've enjoyed having you on the, on the show. Thank you so much. Welcome to Storytime with TNFR. Today, I have a quick clip of a technician who used the new flat rate and what his experience was like. Check it out. So we just opened up the plumbing division at Main Home Services two weeks ago. The very first call we had was an estimate to install a gas line for a fireplace insert. And for all people, the mother and father-in-law to the owner of our company. I was more than just a little concerned. I wasn't sure how to present this package. So I got a hold of Matt the new flat rate he gave me some excellent advice I went in I was at, I was able to sell them the platinum package uh, also they asked me about a kitchen sink they were gonna they wanted to provide a faucet and have me put it in so I went right back to the flat rate um, started reading off the most premium package and then when I turned it around turned my iPad around and said, what should we do? They both looked at each other and looked back at me and their first comment was, I can't believe you, that you can do all that work for that amount of money. We definitely want the platinum package. This is a system that works. Um, it's much more than just pricing. It's, it's the coaching and a whole new way of, of operating. Uh, 34 years, I don't know how I made it without these guys. So Matt, Russ, Rodney, all you guys back at the office, thank you. Talk to you soon. Thanks for that, Daryl. We love to see technicians and contractors succeed in the field. If you have any questions for us or would like to get a hold of us, check out tnfr.us. Hey, what did I tell you? Colleen brought up some really great points, especially how to use TikTok for recruiting. I hadn't even ever thought of it. But as we're recruiting people and everybody's saying, how do I find people? How do I find you know, technicians or office staff? And it's a weird market out there right now. Uh, some great gems were really shared today. So thanks for uh, joining us. Thanks for listening in. If we can do anything, please be sure to reach out. And I'd love to make a mention for Business Uncensored, our annual high-level business conference from the new flat rate coming up October 18th through 20th in Chattanooga, Tennessee. The website is www.2021 for 2021, bu.com to learn more. Uh, or give us a call, send us an email. We'd love to share it with you and see you there. 